Welcome back to Romany Pirates guys. You join us as we've had enough of Spain and we're going to step back onto British soil. In particular, that British soil behind us. So if you've been watching us for the past few weeks, you'll know that we left the UK a few weeks ago. We travelled through France and Spain, spent a few weeks on Ibiza, and now we've travelled the whole south of Spain, haven't we? Yeah, and had an amazing time. Amazing time. And now we are in Gibraltar, or about to cross the border into Gibraltar, into British territory, for a very, very specific reason. So we're heading to the border now. You've got to show your passport. So we've got British passports. Daisy's got all her forms and stuff, haven't she? Yeah, we're hoping they still let her in. <laughs> so, I said they have to let her in because she's either in Spain, which is she's allowed to be because she's got the paperwork, or it's Britain because she's got a British passport, so there is no real way they can deny her, but anyway, we'll see. So we stayed last night in a little car park um, just outside of Gibraltar, because um, parking in Gibraltar is just literally like a no-go. Um, right next to the beach we are, beautiful. Woke up this morning, and it's freezing, oh, absolutely right. freezing. How come anything associated with the United Kingdom is absolutely freezing cold? There's, there's even grey clouds in the sky. As soon as you <laughs> drove towards it through Spain, I was like, you're having a laugh. It just were you're having a laugh. black clouds all above it. it I'm, I don't know, it's something to do with Britain, isn't it? It's it's something freezing. to do with Britain. Freezing. It's freezing. 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 You look beautiful. This is my new from Ocadia. We look, went to Ocadia. You look gorgeous. I'm very and I'm very pleased with it. I really like it. I swear to God, we've travelled 2,000 miles through absolute blazing heat. The only person on this trip that's been cool so far is Daisy because we've just like smothered her in cool mats and she's got fans and all sorts going on. <laughs> And we get here and it's, it's, I can't believe it. it looks like it's going to rain. I swear to God, if it rains on UK territory, like, so for those that don't know where Gibraltar is, it's the very, very southern tip of Spain. It's literally 14 miles away from Africa. And in fact, you can see Africa from where we're going um, at a certain point. You can see the African mountains quite clearly of North Africa. So that's how close we are. But because it's British territory, of course, it's cold, raining. Uh, and there's probably going to be lots of fish and chips there as well. <laughs> so we've come through customs, it was really, really strange. The first police officer said, hola, gracias. And the next one went, aye, Jewsbury. I know Jewsbury. <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird, we come out Really a, nice welcome. Straight, straight away there's a red telephone box. That smashed, just like in the UK. It's really <laughs> weird. So this is a really, really strange oh, feeling. Like, you don't really notice it, but like the traffic lights are British. They're driving on the left hand side of the road, the buses are red. They've got like red fire hydrants, <laughs> red buses. They've got the stuff that we don't even have anymore. I think they've got all our old stuff, you know. <laughs> it is weird, we're back in the UK. It is, it's just like being in England <laughs> with, with a big rock on the weather and it is freezing. So this gets weirder. I'm just walking and I'm saying, why do I feel like I'm walking across a runway? It because you weird. are. And literally I'm walking across the runway and it says you've got to look for the planes because that's reassuring in case there's like a Boeing 747 heading your way and I'm not going to get out of way of that with Daisy and Graham. Look left, right and up it says. <laughs> <laughs> feels a bit like Blackpool. Blackpool with palm trees. Isn't yeah, it? imagine imagine Blackpool or Chester or Liverpool with palm trees. It's this. <laughs> We're just passing a fuel station. I said to him, I went, oh, bloody neck. We could have filled up here, 120 a litre. When was the last time you saw 120 a litre? That's how much they're paying here for fuel. 
That's unbelievable. Really isn't it? We've left the van outside. We've walked, walked in. in. Anshin is filling up. Absolutely gutted. John Lennon. Hey, John. Hey, a bit of Scotland. Yeah, we've not seen a single seagull for the entire of Spain. No. And the seagulls here. And even if you do so, like, you're they wood, don't make the same noise. Like, here, they're like, it just sounds like you're on, like, Scarborough Beach. <laughs> first two, two people I've heard speaking, one guy was saying goodbye to his son who were going to school, I was just about to buy a map and he was saying bye to his son, they were like, um, oh, I mate, have a good day at school, mm -hmm. won't you? And then I've just, uh, I've just walked past the lad and nearly said grassy, like, like, you know, sorry in, uh, in Spanish, lo siento, and, um, and he went, it's all right, bad, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's really, really weird. So I think we're on kind of what they call Main Street. I think it's like the, the town centre and it could be any city in the UK. It's properly, properly weird. There's not West. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the most bizarre. We are literally back in the UK. Like it literally, I know that sounds ridiculous because it's British territory. So Gibraltar is not part of the UK as such, but it is. So it's, it's what the class as British overseas territory, basically. So it is obviously in Spain, but it's British overseas territory. It's very complicated and it gets very political, the ins and outs of why Gibraltar's British, um, which which I think we'll, we'll sort of tell you later, really. There's a lot to it. Um, and I'll try and kind of wrap up as quickly as possible in as a nutshell. Yeah, because it. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's quite a lengthy explanation and a lot of history, obviously. Yeah, I like that one. We always get a postcard for the van. We need a Gibraltar one. Which one do you think, guys? Oh, it's hard, isn't it? Look. The official language here is English. A lot of people speak fluent English and fluent Spanish. Um, but the Spanish seem to speak English as well. I could have been in there to get that postcard. And she were clearly trying to say thank you, but it was like broken English. I suppose it must be a little bit weird for the Spanish people. Imagine, imagine going to Manchester, and all of a sudden everybody's speaking a different language, and it's primarily the language that you should speak or something. I don't really country, know the etiquette. Isn't it? It's your country that's almost been taken. You know, well, that has been taken over by another country. I think that would feel a bit weird. Yeah, we're not quite sure how the Spanish feel about it really yet. Try and find that out. This part of town is called Irish Town. Uh, sorry, Irish. <laughs> Here, um, uh, amongst the fact that it's just an interesting place to come, is that Risa's great great grandma um, is believed to have been born in Gibraltar. Well, she she was. We have the paperwork to prove that she was born in Gibraltar. Um, and Reese has like a different skin colouring. You know, he's darker skinned. He's got very dark hair. He's got a very Spanish look about him. And has always wanted to know a little bit more about his history. Um, and why he has that colouring, what, what, what is his past and he's done years and years and years of like research to be able to trace his family back and his great great grandma Annie Mary was born in Gibraltar and then from what we can gather in her early 20s had, gave birth to a child in the UK so at some point she's left Gibraltar and gone over to the UK um, and that child was Lisa's great grandma um, and he never met his great grandma, the only person he knew was his grandma who he called Nan and there was never really spoke about the history. I suppose you don't when you're a kid, you're not that interested in your, in your history, are you, in your heritage and stuff. But it's as he's got older that he's become more interested and his nan's now passed away. So there's not really much that he can find out first hand. He can't find any birth certificate for her 
and we can't find any kind of marriage certificate. We know she got married and we know she got married to, and that's where Risa's Romany heritage comes in then. Um, and he had kind of his, his grandfather, his great great grandfather, and um, was a Romany traveller. So we wondered if we can come here and first of all, sort of let Reese see, you know, a little bit about where he's come from, a little bit about, you know, where his heritage originated, and also for him to kind of be able to maybe see for some kind of, um, you know, birth, deaths, and marriages place here. Maybe we can see a birth certificate. It's it's a bit like surreal coming here. So for years I've been interested in like my family history and stuff, and my aunt. Auntie Barbara um, and my, my friend Ella have both helped me kind of trace back my roots. Like, I'm hardly, you know, a typical white British person. I've always wondered why. And we traced it back to that I've got Romany traveller heritage. Um, and also uh, Annie Mary, as Emma said, was born in Gibraltar. Annie Mary, as Emma said, married uh, a Romany traveller. And then they had kids and they had kids. Uh, and that kid was my nan, who then had my mum and who then had me. Um, I've been able to, thanks to Ella and my Barber, kind of trace the majority of my history and heritage, which has explained a lot like about my skin colour um, and my love for travel and freedom and things like that. But the, the missing piece was, was my great great grandma called Annie Mary. All I know is that she was, she was born here basically. So it's absolutely like amazing to kind of see where she was born and stuff really, like uh, this elusive Annie Mary. It's weird to think that Annie Mary, my great great grandma, would have walked these streets, possibly lived in one of these houses. Like, it's, it's properly weird. Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it on my own. So I don't actually have Annie Mary's birth certificate. All I have is that she married my granddad, and on that I can see that she was born in Gibraltar. It literally says, age 26, born in Gibraltar, and it's some kind of event that's registered, possibly. I think it's a census, so yeah. you can work out from the date of the census and the age of the, ch the children um, that your great-grandma had left home at about 16 years old, and um, there's a christening certificate for her, and then there's a census date about 16 years later, and she's not on that, but the other children are. That's all we've got, Rick, we're working it out based on the fact that somebody would likely be christened within the first year of being born, um, and so working out dates on that, it does look like she was born about 1861, doesn't it, or thereabouts. Um, I know the rest of my heritage, as I say, I know that there were, there were travellers, and I've got Romany, and I've done blood tests to prove that and DNA tests and all kinds of things. Um, it's just the elusive Annie Mary. Okay. Found a little cafe, we're gonna have a, an English fry up, veggie English fry up. Finally got a black coffee. We've been asking for a coffee all throughout Spain and they give you like a tiny little espresso cup. I finally got a black coffee. Um, a lovely lady and a lovely gentleman have just advised us to go to the registry office here. What's the verdict? So basically the lovely lady in there has been really, really helpful. She's done a thorough search. Um, they can't find her because the births at the time, so we, we guessed between 1850 and even up to 1880 that she were born. And there were no records of births kept in Gibraltar at that time. So oh, no. she can't help me. Um, the only thing we know is that she married a guy called Charles Bishop. Um, presumably back in the UK because there's no record of Charles Bishop because I've got all his information he wasn't on so the So she didn't meet time. him here? It doesn't look like she met him here she was born here and somehow ended up in the UK where she then married this Charles my great great granddad. Um, so the idea that he was like um, a British army here is not? It doesn't look like it because no. there would be a record of him here so they definitely didn't get married here they got married in the UK but when I look at his records all it says is that he married Annie Mary. <laughs> Which she says, Annie Mary, she says they, 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 there has to be a last name, there has to be something, but there isn't. But she can tell that Annie Mary was born in Gibraltar around that time, there's just no record of it. Oh, so that's the end of the line then, isn't it, really? I don't think there's anywhere else we can go. Oh. That were really disappointing. I'm just, uh, really hard because I've spent years looking for her. And that's it, like the, the, the trail ends there. Um, but like Emma was just saying, like it's, you know, it means so much to me because it's everything I've been looking for. I know it sounds daft with my great-great-grandma, but the story is basically, 
my nan used to say she were, that her grandma was from Spain and people didn't really take any notice and stuff and I took it seriously and started and found that, that this anime we were born in Gibraltar which is lovely because that lady's confirmed that 100% she was um, but it's just hard because I've, I've spent years looking for her and, uh, and that's the end of the line basically compose myself a bit now it's just it's just a bit overwhelming like you know for years and years and years of searching your history and to know this is where it all began just a bit overwhelming really um and what's really lovely though is all all the ladies that are around 60 70 all look and i'm not exaggerating like literally exactly the same as my nan did like it's quite astounding actually to see that you know really usually strange. when we go to spain reese has a very very much a spanish look about him and you can kind of see that um, but to come here and see people who have kind of, you know, whose families have clearly been here for generations. So in, we've talked to a few people whose families have been here for generations. And you can see, you can clearly see the lineage. You can clearly see the, the, the look that there is a definite, you know, kind of um, similarity in, yeah. in, 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 in your in my, 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 features. My nan had this, and... it's, it's my nan's nose. They've all got yeah. my nan's nose. <laughs> it's really weird. And, and I guess, like Emma was just saying, like, this mystery about Annie Mary, and I know it don't mean anything to you guys because it's just a name, but like, it, it, you know, to, to see to see that lineage and to see everybody looking like literally they've all got my nan's nose. It's hard to explain. That sounds ridiculous, but they have, and and it's really really interesting. And, and this this mystery that will forever now be around Annie Mary. Maybe that's meant to be. Maybe you know, things are best left a mystery, and that's nice. These are the gardens where John Lennon apparently got married. So we can have a look round. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. We're actually stealthing uh, Daisy through here. Um, she's in a pram, she's covered up, she's fine. The sign up there saying beware of the caterpillars, they're extremely poisonous apparently, it cause irritation of the skin. <laughs> Another sign there saying I've got to watch out for the European free-tailed bat. Caution. What is this place? <laughs> it's like a garden full of hazards and... I don't like anything that flies. Well, we've got to find this bat. I want some footage of it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Middle of a tropical garden. There's telephone boxes everywhere. Gibraltar's obviously known for wild monkeys. Um, but we've just had a look. You can either go on a cable car. I'm not getting on. Or... You can walk up. Well, it's not even walkable. Look at that. Walk up to the top of that to see the monkey. It'd be great because I'd like I'd like to see it, but it's a long, long walk. There's a chicken here walking down the path. Look. Morning. I'm in like a wildlife conservation area. Um, Daisy stay outside with uh, with Emma because um, there's a lot of steps and stuff in here. These little parrots here are so tame. I right, just sat there, like literally in touching distance. It's so lovely. I'm gonna come past you now. Don't fly away. Hey! Never met such a tame parrot. Hello. What are you doing? So room with the pirates. Room with the pirates. What lovely gardens they were. Just uh, really nice and had a little wander around that animal park. We're going to try and get up and see the monkeys. We're not quite sure how. We don't think Daisy can go. So the plan is for Emma to stay down at the bottom and I'm going to try and get up there to see the monkey. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not getting on a cable car. So we're going to see if... Um, there's a really, really big bridge for you to walk across where I think the monkeys are like underneath there. Like their their sanctuary type place like underneath this bridge there's no way no way i'm walking across that bridge there's no there's no way i'm getting on that cable car look at this cable car absolutely no chance i won't get on that if you paid me just no way so i'd manage the cable car i think at a push because i'm not too bothered with heights but i still don't think i'll enjoy it but i do want to see the wild monkeys the the mckees macaws I think that's how you pronounce it. The cars, that's a fire. I've got no idea. Route two bus back down to here. Get the route three bus. 
we're not going to see the monkeys basically um you can you can go up on a on a tour bus um it's about 70 quid to see this monkey uh, at the top of this rock um but we've been told as well not strictly not the guy that we spoke to at the cafe made us promise that we would not take daisy up up he said that the monkeys will go straight for her um, and he said they'll just they'll just go for her basically. Yeah, his mate works and looks after him up there, and he was saying like every morning he goes in to like look after him, um, and he finds iPhones and bags um, and everything. They'll just basically take everything off you. And so you know we don't obviously want them taking our camera equipment because apparently they're quite keen on camera equipment. Yeah. Um, thieving so and sos is what he called them, but he used a different word. But he says do not. He said don't take the dog up. He no, said, he, said, he said they'll just take her. He said they'll just take her, so we can't. We can't risk it at all. And it's not really much fun going up just one. No, of us, we, we've we been don't... debating, haven't we? Yeah. We're like, shall one of us go up? And it's not the same. Like, it's not the same experience. Do you know what I mean? If one of us goes up, we're just filming it to sort of. You it... might as well watch David Attenborough. Yeah. In fact, do that. Do that after this episode. Just type David Attenborough into YouTube. You'll see loads of monkeys there, um, and it won't cost us eighty quid to show you them. So, <laughs> also being told, you can see Africa from Gibraltar. It's only 12, 14 miles away, something like that. However, the guys that we were uh, speaking to in the cafe just down there said go to Tarifa. Apparently, it's a beautiful place, very kind of hippie vibe. Uh, and apparently, that's closer to Africa than what Gibraltar is. So we're going to try and see it from there, basically. I'm a traveling spirit. I've seen many shores from the West Pacific to the island. So we're just at the Eroski supermarket, I'm waiting outside with Daisy, Emma's just gone in to get some supplies because we've literally run out of food. And then we're going to head to Tarifa where we've been advised to go, where we, apparently it's the best view of Africa you can get. Well I've enjoyed it here, it's been good, it's been interesting, it's been emotional hasn't it? Oh yeah, um, it's been a roller coaster. I think if I were to sum it up, I'd, I don't think I'd come back. I think. If I were to sum it up, I'd probably say like it's it's beautiful, it's some beautiful architecture, beautiful buildings. Kind of feels like it's been a bit ruined by British shops, and um, and it's like if you want to see if you want to see the kind of a different a different country, but you're not really into mixing with other people, you want to be just around British people, then this is a place to come. Yeah, or um, if you want Britain but you want it warm with a couple of palm trees and a couple of monkeys. And still have your fish and chips. Still have your fish and chips, still and have, have your cooked breakfast. Yeah. Have a pint of Foster's this outside a British place. pub. Come here. I like to travel to see other cultures and I yeah. think that's what we're missing here. For me, it's it's obviously been an emotional roller coaster trying to find Annie Mary. Um, and I'm glad I've come for that. I'm glad it's given me a sense of identity. For me, it's, it's not, it's not, not the greatest place I've ever been. Um, it's lovely, it's nice. If you're down this way, it's worth the trip. Interesting, just because it is literally like being in England abroad. It's, yeah, it's it fascinating. It's quite fascinating for that. And there are a few of the obvious other cultures here, but it's just predominantly like um, dominated by British culture. That's what it feels like. It feels like we've come in somewhere and we've really dominated a, 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 you know, an area um, that has beautiful Spanish buildings and yeah. beautiful tiled Spanish floors. The and, British have always been know, great at that. And yeah, and we've just kind of <laughs> taken over and dominated it. And, and to be honest with you, the minute I kind of came here, I just started, I felt quite guilty. Yeah, but it's not uh, you your know, fault. You don't need to apologise. Apparently Gibraltar was seized in 1704 by the British um, in operations against the French. The idea was to prevent France from inheriting the, uh, the Spanish throne. And then in 1713, um, Spain ceded Gibraltar um, to Britain, basically. And it's been British ever since. Um, it was used in World War II. Um, it's, it's very kind of military. It's been used as like a military outpost, I guess. Um, but apparently somewhere along that treaty Spain had kind of said that it would forever belong to Britain from what I can gather um, so that's that's kind of a, a, it's very very political and very kind of complicated to understand it by the looks of it um, but that's basically the gist of it and that's why it's a sort of British overseas territory basically so we're just loading the shopping into Romany and then we're going to head where are we going again? Tarifa, Tarifa <laughs> let's check out Tarifa Join us next week in Tarifa. Thank you so much for watching. Keep writing your own story.